The International Criminal Court is the first independent international criminal court to try perpetrators, commanders, for genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. All rise. The International Criminal Court is now in session. During the previous century, millions of people were victims of unimaginable atrocities. A determination that the most serious crimes of concern to the international community must not go unpunished led to the establishment of a permanent, independent, international criminal court. The Reckoning is a film about dreams of what's possible conflicting with the reality of what exists. It's a story that's played out over six years, over four continents, in at least six different languages. It's the story of can some of the worst criminals in the world who have done some of the most horrendous things be brought to justice? And at the same time, can an institution survive that has that as its goal in this real political world? We can trace its evolution back to the Nuremberg Tribunals right after World War II where the Allies decided that Nazi perpetrators would not be summarily executed, that they would be tried, that we would use rule of law to try alleged war criminals. We ask this court to affirm by international penal action man's right to live in peace and dignity, regardless of his race or creed. The United States has been really instrumental in developing international justice. Not only were we front and present at the Nuremberg Tribunals, but in the 1990s, we were very much behind the ad hoc tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which many people know as the tribunal that tried Milosevic, and the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. And the United States had a large delegation at the Rome Conference where the ICC was formed, where the treaty that formed the ICC was written. It was very disappointing when in the last days of the Rome Conference, um, the United States decided not to sign the Rome Treaty. Later, under President Clinton, in the last few days of his administration, the United States did sign, but President Clinton left office, and President Bush decided that, that the United States should unsign the treaty, that the United States should withdraw from being part of the International Criminal Court and then actually appointed John Bolton to be the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Whether the ICC survives and flourishes depends in large measure on the United States. We should isolate and ignore the ICC. Tangible American interests are at risk. Our main concern should be for the president and other senior leaders responsible for our defense and foreign policy. I took it on myself to be a uh, one of my responsibilities because I felt it was so important to protect American citizens from being the subject of investigation or prosecution by this, uh, by this institution. The U.S. Uh, actively tried to undermine the court and destroy the court. John Bolton said you know, that was his goal. He said there's no higher document than the U.S. Constitution. So that, you know, for him, is the guiding document. The idea of a multilateral treaty uh, that would give jurisdiction to a court uh, uh, over, over the U.S. Uh, is something that was anathema to him. And uh, yet it, it also fosters a misunderstanding about the court because the court only comes in if a country fails to prosecute crimes themselves so, or is unwilling to. And so you know, we have to presume the U.S. wouldn't be unwilling uh, to do it and we certainly have a robust legal system that could handle any kind of crime you always have these two kinds of characters that we follow. The characters who we might say are victims, but they're more than victims. They're victims who are seeking justice, so they're victim activists. And then there are the people from the court who are mandated to carry through a dream that the originators of the court have put out there for them to work with. The dream is that there will be no more impunity in the world for political leaders, for powerful strong men who commit terrible crimes, that nobody should be above the reach of the law.
The reckoning really pulls you in behind the scenes to how the International Criminal Court got up and running and the kinds of decisions that they had to make. And it introduces you to some very compelling people in the International Criminal Court from all over the world. But you know, the main character of the film is the court itself. And it's really about how the people at the court decided on, investigated, and bring major criminals, international criminals, to account for crimes that they have allegedly committed. To say that an institution is a character is not an easy thing. And so our job in telling the story was to really bring to life in a human way an abstract institution. A character really has to have pathos, the character has to have vulnerability. The character has to have will. The audience has to be able to see within that character something of themselves. In all of the cases that the International Criminal Court has been involved in, there's always going to come up this question about peace and justice. Where should the balance be? Many people say that we have to have peace first before we can have justice. And others say that there really can't be any sustainable peace without justice. To my mind, it's a false argument. It's not f peace versus justice. It's peace and justice. We have to figure out how to have both simultaneously. I just submitted an application requesting an arrest warrant against Omar al-Bashir for genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. Al-Bashir is executing this genocide without gas chambers, without the bullets, rape, hunger, fear will do it for him. I think of the ICC as a court for small countries that don't have big armies. It's definitely not a superpower court because none of the superpowers have joined it. And uh, at one of the Security Council meetings, the representative of Costa Rica stood up at one point and said, it's really important that we enforce these warrants for al-Bashir because the rule of law is why we join the ICC. So we don't have an army in Costa Rica. Our only protection is the rule of law. So we look at the rule of law as our protection, not the rule of the gun. My hope and my feeling is that the audience is going to identify with the goals of the court. That you can have rule of law in the world and that the worst criminals will be punished for what they do. I really think it's up to the citizens of the United States to pressure our representatives to join the International Criminal Court. It can't be a top-down thing. It has to be from us, the citizens, who say, the United States should be part of the International Criminal Court, and we should stand with governments that oppose these kinds of crimes.